This board right here is easily the most requested MATX board that we've ever had on the channel since the channel began. This is the MSI MAG B850M Mortar Wi-Fi, and this is a very, very special MATX motherboard for Ryzen 7000, 8000, and 9000 processors. I don't think this board even exists yet. I didn't even know this thing was coming. It just turned up, and I wanna show you the one thing that I've never seen on an MATX board before that this does. Let's take a look. This video is brought to you by VIPSCDKey.com. Have you ever installed Windows 11 only to see the watermark of death? You don't need to fork out a couple of hundred dollars for a key. You can grab one from today's video sponsor from VIPSCDKey.com for a tenth of the price. You can use our code GEAR to get 30% off for this month only. How good is that? That takes that already cheap Windows 11 key and makes it even cheaper. It's easy as placing your order. Bingo bango. You've got your new key on your orders page. You chuck that key into the activation screen and you're good to go. No more watermark of death. Use code GEAR to get 30% off for this month only. Link in the description. On with the video, back to you, Nick. All right, here it is, the MSI MAG B850M Mortar Wi-Fi. Let's get that motherboard out of the way so we can take a bit of a look at this very interesting MATX board from MSI. First of all, we've got the Wi-Fi antenna. This is for the built-in Wi-Fi 7 and Bluetooth 5.4. There's this little M.2 standoff. Basically, it's like a little joystick and it's for toolless M.2 drive installation. And this goes somewhere very interesting that we'll come back to in a moment. There's also all of the documentation, including some stickers, a quick installation guide, some regulatory notices and all that kind of stuff. And the standard stuff you'll find with most MSI motherboards. There's also a single SATA or SATA cable for your 2.5 inch SSD or your three and a half inch hard drive or spinning rust drive. There's also the easy connector. This is a combined PWM and three pin five volt addressable RGB cable that connects to a specific header on the board, which I'll show in just a moment. There's also this single cable to connect all of your front panel cables into a block. And it just makes it a bit easier for connecting and cable managing all of those cables, especially if you've never built before. All right. Let's unsheath the B850M Mortar Wi-Fi and take a bit of a closer look at something that I think you guys may or may not find interesting, if I'm being honest. All right, there's the front panel audio header. There's a four pin 12 volt RGB header, three pin five volt addressable RGB header. There's a PWM fan header. There's the easy connect header for that cable I was talking about a moment ago. There's also a separate PCIe power connector to send more power to the board for PCIe devices and M.2s two USB 2.0 front panel headers for liquid coolers and RGB controllers. There's a USB 3.2 front panel header. This is typically 10 gigabit USB type A. There's a front panel header for all the lights and all the switches and another three pin five volt addressable RGB header. On the right hand edge of the board, there's two more PWM fan headers. There's four right angled SATA ports for your 2.5 inch SSDs or your three and a half inch hard drives. There's a USB Type-C front panel header. This will typically be 20 gigabit. There's the 24 pin power connected to send juice to your brand new B850M Mortar Wi-Fi. There's a diagnostic postcode LED array on the surface of the board, a three pin five volt addressable RGB header. There's three more PWM fan headers along the edge of the board too. On the top left-hand side of the board, there's two eight pin EPS power connectors or CPU power. As for the PCIe slots, there's a single PCIe 5.0 by 16 slot right up the top, as well as a single PCIe 4.0 by 4 slot towards the bottom. Now, the thing that I like about these boards, and ASRock also does this, is the end of the PCIe slot here is open, so it doesn't matter what size card you install here, it'll just run at PCIe by four. Why this is good is because if you're trying to build like an AI model or something and you need an extra GPU, you can do it on this board because you don't need the full bandwidth to use it for those applications. This board also has the quick release mechanism that we're seeing on much higher end MSI boards. This is a lock. So when you push it down, it will open the slot. And then when you release it, it locks the slot. If you look closely, it has a little icon to show the state of what the slot is doing at that point in time whenever you press the button in. For the VRM layer on this board, it features a 12 plus 2 plus 1 phase digital VRM setup with 80 amp smart power stages. The heat sink for the whole IO cover is for that VRM cooling as well. And then there's a massive heat sink towards the top of the board too 
to help dissipate all of the heat. This board features the AM5 socket, which will support Ryzen 7000 up to Ryzen 9000 processors, including every single X3D variant there is. Let's pop open the AM5 socket so you can get a little bit of a closer look to see what's going on. The reason why I do this is typically, especially with our channel, a lot of people haven't built PCs before and they really want to build PCs. And this just gives you a bit of a look at what is going on inside of a socket. So you don't need to really be scared of anything, but again, be careful with your socket when you're installing your CPUs. If we flip the board over, you can see that it has something very interesting. And this is the whole exciting thing about this board for me. It's also something I've never ever seen on an MATX before. Correct me if I'm wrong, but this is the first time that there is an M.2 slot on the backside of an MATX board, not ITX, MATX. And I'm kind of here for it. As for RAM compatibility, this board will support up to 256 gigs of DDR5 memory at up to 8400 mega transfers. The 8400 mega transfers is a specification, not a recommendation. Let's take a look at those M.2 slots. It has a quick release heatsink for the top two M.2 slots. Basically, you just push it in, it's a spring loaded button, and then you can lift the heatsink off. As mentioned, it has two M.2 slots on the top side. These are both PCIe Gen 5 M.2 slots. On the back side, we have another M.2 slot. This is a PCIe Gen 4 by 2 M.2 slot. As mentioned, I've never seen an M.2 slot on the back of an MATX board. With M.2 slots on the back side of the motherboard, you will need to be aware of the size of the heatsink here. This M.2 is just to give you a bit of an idea of what it would look like with a large-ish heatsink. And if your motherboard tray has a big enough cutout, then it's not going to be a problem. But given where the holes are for mounting the board, yeah, just be careful with M.2s here. For rear I.O., we've got a clear CMOS button. We've got a BIOS flashback button. We've got an HDMI 2.1 port. We've got five gigabit Ethernet. We've got three USB type A 10 gig ports and a single USB type C 10 gig port. Four USB five gigabit type A ports a USB Type-C 20 gig port. Now these are not technically designed to do PCIe tunneling. So yeah, that's Thunderbolt essentially, as well as the antenna connectors for the built-in Wi-Fi 7 and Bluetooth 5.4, as well as a line in jack, a line out jack and optical slash SPDIF output for your audio. How interesting is that? This has an M.2 slot on the back of the board. I've never seen an MATX board that does this before. And if there is a board that does it, I haven't seen it. So yeah, can't really comment on something that I have never encountered before. But typically we see this on ITX boards and never bigger desktop boards. If we start to see M.2 slots on the back of motherboards, how long is it gonna be before we start seeing it on ATX boards? The reason why I think this is cool is most motherboard trays these days have massive cutouts on the back. So even accessing M.2 slots on the back of the board would be possible on most cases, depending on whereabouts they put it. So say for instance, I was to install this in an ATX case with a open backed motherboard tray, you can easily get access to this M.2 slot. For some cases, it may be an issue, but what's gonna happen is the more that this happens, the more that case manufacturers are gonna see that motherboard vendors are doing it and they're gonna adapt. And that's what we saw with back connected motherboards starting in 2023. And we've seen wide support for back connected motherboards now. And this feature here is, it's really cool guys. And here's why, here's the other reason why. Now I know I'm rambling a bit, but most of the time when you have M.2 drives in your system, you need to remove your GPU because typically the heatsink is gonna be under the GPU or you've got a slot above your GPU. And to be honest, it can be quite tricky to remove an M.2 in the top slot 
in any use case. But what we've seen with these huge GPUs now is most of these new MATX boards have moved the top PCIe slot to the first position, whereas a few years ago, we were seeing it typically in the second and even in some cases in the third position. What this means is now we're seeing MATX boards with more than two M.2 slots. And this is just a very clever way of doing it. Sorry for rambling, I've just never seen this and it got me very, very excited. The other forward thinking thing that's kind of ubiquitous across all MSI boards at the moment is five gigabit ethernet. And you can check out our MSI motherboard factory tour that we did in China last year, where I talked a little bit about this, but we're seeing it on almost all of their boards now. The issue for people can be is multi-gig switches are expensive and five gig is a very strange speed for ethernet. Typically you'll need a 10 gig switch to do five gig anyway, so they can be a bit expensive. There's like Unify XG Flex switches that can do that kind of stuff as well. Also they've got like really cheap 2.5 gig switches. So even if you wanted to do 2.5 gig, it's not that expensive anymore. You can get a 2.5 gig switch now guys, for 49 US dollars, which is insane. I think what's really gonna make this board stand out is if MSI prices this very competitively because there's no pricing for this board right now, there's no availability, all that exists is the product page on MSI's website. I cannot find a single place on the entire internet that would indicate what the price would be. Although we know how much the B860M motor Wi-Fi is, and that one is around about 189 US dollars or around about 375 Aussie dollars at the time of filming this video. So I would guess because this doesn't have Thunderbolt 4, and some of those other features, it will probably be around, I'm gonna say 179 US dollars or around about 350, 360 Aussie dollars, but it's very, very hard to say right now. Let me know if you guys were hanging out for this board because I've seen the comments and we've had so many requests. I've probably seen like a hundred comments of people asking, when are we gonna look at this board? When are we gonna look at this board? It's right here but I really don't know anything about it other than it's here, there's a product page, and we're gonna do a build with this thing very, very soon because 2025, ladies and gents, is looking like the year of MATX. I say that every year because it's my favorite form factor. <laughs>